Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about the scales, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do with this cone. We're gonna to try to make this cone, this flat shape, look like a three-dimensional object. Uh, to draw it, um, I mean, you just simply make kind of a triangle without the last edge, and you create an ellipse like this that's kind of slightly uh, oblong, like so. I think this is about maybe two and a half inches long, and this is a little over three. And you might be able to fit this on your sketch pad uh, page with, with these other ones. Uh, what we're going to try to do is just create something that looks a little bit you know, like this, where we're going to have the light coming from the right side. It's going to be totally dark underneath, as if the light can't even get to that. And we're going to create some transition and gradation here. So let's dive right on in, shall we? If you need to pause the video and draw this, or if you need to draw it and replay the video later after you've drawn it. If you don't have time to do it all at once, you can. But uh, I would recommend maybe doing some of this with me. Um, I would take the bottom. This is the easy place to start. You Again, use the side of your pencil. You're going to do on the bottom here that you did for number 10 up here. You're going to get it as black and as dark as you can get it, though we didn't get it as black and dark as we could up here. We probably needed more layers. But for the sake of time, we're just trying to give you the idea. So we come in, and again, it's a good idea to stay in the lines if you can just to stay neat sometimes an artist great to go outside the line sometimes that's the plan that's what you want to do whenever you're drawing something i will tell you be careful what is underneath your paper sometimes if you push down really hard on something it'll press through on the other side and leave lines behind i'm seeing a couple of phantom lines show up in my little uh, worksheet here which means i must have been drawing on top of this page at some point I'm going to come in, get this as dark as I can, and I can layer it multiple times, keeping the lines close together. I can build it up, use continuous tone value at first, in other words, just layer, 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 layer until I can. Now, we're just simply using number two pencils. As far as what kind of pencils work best, um, I think wooden pencils work better, especially if they're real wood, not that plas half plastic, half wood pencil. I think wooden pencils work better. I think the lids are darker, or nice, you know, number two, especially Ticonderoga, they're a good brand. Um, when we're doing actual projects in class, I usually use really fancy graphite pencils that have all kinds of different levels of value and depth, but we're just using regular pencils for this exercise, okay? Now, I haven't blended it yet, but I will in a minute. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a series of values. Now, when I create the values, I'm not going to take the values parallel like this because then my highlight is going to be a little tiny triangle down here. It's not going to be logical. I want my highlight to look like this. So what I want you to think about is, is think of the values as being as fanning out gradually across here, kind of like a pendulum of a clock or, or like slices of a pizza or, or even those brick lines on your uh, hallway drawings, how they kind of, you know, fan out. So what we're going to do is, and I don't recommend you drawing these lines that I'm going to draw. I'm just doing this so you can see what we're going to do. I'm going to draw a really, really black sliver of value here and then a value here. Again, I would not draw these lines. Usually I don't say do as I say and not as I do, uh, but the reason why I'm afraid to ask you to do this is I'm afraid you'll push down too hard and then these lines will show up in the lighter areas. So I'm gonna stop and I'm just gonna make this area as black as this area. Come in, again, use the side of my pencil. I wouldn't let the pencil get down to the wood. If you let the pencil get down to the wood, it's gonna dig trenches in your paper really bad, and uh, you won't be able to, to blend those without white lines showing up, and you won't be able to get rid of them. So try to use the side of your pencil. Um, could you use a mechanical pencil for it? Yeah, you could. Uh, probably one of the best art students I've ever had. All she used were mechanical pencils. I don't know how she did it, but uh, I think she used some specialized leads. Oh. I'm working into the next value, but I'm not gonna push down quite as hard. Let me go back in here and layer this one more time, really thick, really dark. Now, over here, I'm gonna layer it with not as much pressure. I'm still keeping my pencil strokes close together, but I'm not going to use as much pressure. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm probably gonna color over it two or three times. There we go. All right, I haven't blended it yet. Over here, I'm now going to push down, not as hard as I did here, but even a little lighter. And you're going to see some definite separations in value. We want to get rid of those eventually. And then what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to create an even lighter one, but I'm going to be really light. Really, really light here. Because I don't want to overdo it. 
I want to leave some pure white here. So I tell you what, I might need another value here, but I'm going to wait because when I blend, some of this is going to push over and I think it's going to create uh, maybe a little transition gradation. I may not even need to add an extra value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my blending stumps. Again, remember on a, a blending stump, you just rip you off some paper towel, take it, fold it in half. I know that my camera kind of blurred on me uh, the second time I did this. I think the first time it was very, very clear. But take that. There we go. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to use the same value to get in here. But I can't use the black black all the way over, or it could, or it could blend, so or it could uh, make it too dark. So I'm going to come in, and again, you can do circular motions, or you can do side to side motions. That's up to you. Don't be afraid to go back and layer over it again with more pencil and come back. Good art, like food, <laughs> takes time. Good food takes time. Good art takes time. So when you get better at it, you're able to usually do it a little quicker and faster. But at first, you got to take the time to learn. So I've blended it. I'll just come back and erase that later. And I'm going to use the same blend. So it's really dark. And I'm going to use it because it's got lead on here. It's going to help make this richer and darker. So I'm just going to focus on the first two and kind of push them together, hoping they're going to bleed into each other and maybe push into the third one. But... I don't want to go too dark too soon. So I'm going to flip over my blending stump and use the lighter side. And I'm going to try to see if I can't just start here in the light part, blend into the dark part a little. Then we blend from this light part into the white and see what I can get. And I have a dark streak showing up. Maybe I pushed down too hard with my pencil or maybe there was something on here that did that. And that's not bad. It's starting to look three-dimensional. I don't like that streak. I could try to erase it out. You want to have a good quality eraser if you do. And if you go too dark too far over, you can use an eraser, but don't leave a highlight that is really, really like a strong light like that. You want it to fade out. You want there to be a transition gradation. So take your lead and maybe lightly color in here just a little bit and let's see if we can't blend that away there we go let it fuzzy out you don't want this to be gray you want there to be white here okay but you want this to be dark but I'm not having a smooth enough transition gradation between my values like here there's a bit of a line See this dark line leading into this value? I want to get rid of that. So I'm not going to erase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to shade a little more along this area. Not as hard as here, but maybe just a little extra layer to here until it disappears a little bit more. Then blend it and it should fade away because I want there to be a smooth transition gradation. Sometimes shadows are sharp and crisp, but sometimes they just fade and they're smooth. And that's what makes it look more realistic. Like up here, there wasn't much of a transition gradation there. I might even erase a little bit in there. Add a little bit of value. Come back in. Layer that just a little bit more. It looks pretty good already without blending it, but I'm going to blend it. And again, I'm sorry that the light causes such a reflection on here. Come back to the dark side of the force here and use the dark side of the... Blend and stump, come in, and blend that a little bit more. Now, I'm not giving this quite the time and attention that it deserves, but I think you can see that, you know, it looks fairly three-dimensional. And here's some other examples that, you know, I've done in different semesters. Some are better than others. This one's a better one. Sometimes it depends on the pencil I'm using at the time, okay? But you get the idea. Now, um, I'm going to stop the video at this point because I'm afraid if we do this one, we'll have one video that's way too long. So we're going to stop here. Uh, if you want to do this one first and finish working on it, and, and it's going to take you probably a little longer than it did me. So it's okay if it's taking you more time to get it done. So go in and get this one done, and then when you come back, we'll talk about this one.